What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to go over at Coda Beginner 174 contest, uh, Beginner Contest 174 A, B, C, D, and E. We're not going to go over F because I still don't understand the problem, the last problem F, but we're going to go over A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, so the first problem is, is that you will turn on an air conditioner if and only if the temperature of the room is 30 degrees or above. So the, the problem that would trick people up here is or above. Remember that? That means 30 degrees greater than or equal to 30. So all you have to do is, in this case, just print yes if it's greater than or equal to 30 and print no otherwise. So uh, here I'll just show you my code right now. What tripped me up beginning was the greater than or equal to. So when you read problems, make sure that you actually understand the problem. So what I did here is just I read just read in the value that I'm checking. It, T, I put T, it could be X. You could name it whatever, but whatever value. But yeah, all you have to do is check if it's greater than or equal to 30 and then print yes. Otherwise, print no. So what also could tri trip people up is this, the yes. You might you sometimes people print like complete uh, uppercase. Sometimes people print it all lowercase. Um, you have to make sure that your input and output matches. So that's that's the only issue that, there. Okay, now let's do problem B. So you have n points on a given plane, and the coordinates of the ith point are x, i, and y, i. And now you need to look for points from the origin. Uh, look for the points such that the distance from the origin is at most d. And how many points are there? So all you have to do is just for this in this case is that. You have to loop through all the points, uh, calculate the distance, and then check uh, for for every one that is at most d, just add one to a counter, right? So um, to to do this, they want the distance at most d from the origin. So what trips people up here is the at most. At most means is that the maximum possible you could have is d. So what does that mean? That means our distance is we're checking if the distance from the origin is less than or equal to D. Okay, we're not checking if it's greater than or equal to D, right? We're checking less than or equal to D because the, the distance is at most D, okay? And how do you calculate the distance? Uh, to calculate the distance, all you have to do is just do the distance formula. So the distance formula is actually this. So we have X, I, Y, I, and the distance of the origin is zero, zero. So Distance formula is just x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, and then square root it. And that's that's all that you have to do for a distance formula. And that's uh, and we're here checking less than or equal to d. Now, what trips people up is that sometimes when you do square root in your code, that might actually complicate things because you're comparing uh, doubles and floats. So what? you could do to make it easier is actually you could square both sides, which is what I did. So I squared both sides and I also simplified this equation. So I did X I square plus Y I square is less than or equal to D square. All right. This is a D by the way, D, uh, D is the one that we're checking. So basically you just have to go through all the points, calculate the, the, the distance from to the origin and then check if it's, um, less than or equal to D square. Yeah, that's all that's all you have to do. So here I'll show you the code what I did. And let me just show here over here distance D. Oh, whoops, I did a see I just got a new pen right now. So that allows me to write stuff now. So it's pretty cool. So yeah, um, so all you have to do is just read in the number of values n is the number of points. No, actually, yeah, n is the number of points. D is the distance that you're trying to check at most D. Um, so what I did was I had a counter answer and I set it to zero. Then I loop through all the number of points, which is, this is what this while loop while the number of points is greater than zero. I'm going to subtract it. I'm going to read in every X and Y value for each point. Then I'm just going to check if X times X from our equation here, X times X plus Y times Y is less than or equal to D squared, which if you Put out in this case it would be x times x plus y times y less than or equal to d times d and then if it is then we just add one to the counter answer and then after the all the points are done we just print out our counter so that's how you do problem b all right c this is a little tricky 
So I'm gonna try to go over it. Actually, it wasn't that it wasn't that tricky actually. So here, um, this Takashi loves the value, the number seven and multiples of K. So K is just a value that you're inputting. Um, where Where is the first occurrence of K in the sequence of seven, to, uh, seven, 77, 777? See output below. If there are no multiples of K, print negative one instead. Okay, so the basically all you have to do for, in this case is uh, look at this sequence 7, 77, 777. So how do we get from 7, 7 to 77? And then how do we get from 77 to 777? That's actually pretty easy. Um, if you just look at this from 7 to 77 and then 777, all you have to do to get 77 from 7 is just take 7, then multiply it by 10, then add 7, right? That'll get you 77. So this is actually what 77 is. And then 777 is just the same as uh, 77 multiply by 10 and then adding seven. Okay, so once you know this, you can find uh, the next value in each, uh, next value for the next, val uh, the next value for the sequence, right? You continue going on the sequence. So what you could do to solve this problem is just keep going from 7777 and just keep looping for in this sequence for a variable for, for the sequence to keep going. And then you're gonna check uh, the first occurrence, the multiples of K. So if it's, uh, if it is divisible by K, because it's a multiple of K in the sequence, then you just uh, break out of the loop. And then, yeah, you just print it. Um, otherwise you print negative one. So uh, how, how are you gonna know when to stop the loop? So what you could do is some, it was pretty basic. Um, you would actually just go with brute force all the constraints. So you would just loop from one to 10 to the six, and then you keep track of variable of an answer or something of the next value in the sequence. And then you just check if it's uh, divisible by K. So to check if it's divisible by K, oh my bad. You just take, uh, just check whatever variable it is. Let's say var, let's say I name my variables of this variable var. So I have an, uh, you just do mod by K, which this is, takes the mod by K means I get the remainder and I just check if it's equal to zero. So if, if this case is true, then yeah, I just break and then I print out the number. So um, I'll just show you the code right now. So yeah, uh, this was, this tripped me up a bit also, but I understand it. So yeah, what, what I did was I read in the number K, right? Which is the one that we have to check if it's divisible by. So I have a counter starting from zero, which is my current number. Um, I'm gonna brute force from one to 10 to the six cause that's the maximum constraint we have. So this is a hacky way to do it. Um, so yeah, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the current value that I have zero in the beginning is zero, but then um, later on, uh, I'm gonna multiply by 10 and then add seven. So I'm gonna do that every single time. And then I'm gonna check if it's um, current mod by K, uh, each current value mod by K is actually gonna to equal to zero or not, right? So that checks if it's divisible by it. My current var variable that I'm multiplied by seven, multiplied by 10, adding seven is a zero or not. And if it is, I'm just going to print out I. I is the counter that we're starting from one to 10 to the six. And the reason why we go 10 to the six is that we need to find uh, 10 to the six is the maximum possible one. So we could brute force it because we could go through all the constraints and then, yeah. And it would print out the first occurrence of the value K that is in the sequence. Okay. Because of uh, first occurrence would actually just be that. Yeah. And uh, if you go through all uh, values of K from one to 10 to the six and it's not possible, then yeah, you just print out negative one. So like this, in this case, like two. So yeah, uh, let's go back to the code again. Oh, whoops, I'll just do this. Uh, yeah, right here. So yeah, multiply by 10, add seven, mod it by K, right? Get the remainder mod of K. If it's equal to zero, I just print out the current number that I'm looping from one to 10 to the six. So that'll be that number. And then yeah, then I return zero. 
Um, otherwise, if I go through all the numbers from 1 to 10 to 6 to like brute force those and it doesn't work, then I just print out negative 1. So yeah, that's the code. All right. I think it gets pretty hard. It gets harder and harder here. Okay. D. So you have a shrine of N stones arranged from left to right. The color of the ith stone is given to you R, uh, which just stands for R, and it stands for which stands for red. And then you have W, which stands for white. So you could do the two two operations. Um, you could choose two stones, not necessarily adjacent. So this is a this is a uh, clue. It's not necessarily adjacent. And you swap them, or you could choose one stone and it change its color. So you could change from right to red to white, or white to not. Okay, so um, in this case, uh, let's say you have, uh, I want to give an example. Um, so yeah, uh, what what uh, the fortune teller wants is that a white stone cannot be placed to the left of a red stone because I'll bring a disaster. And you want to see how many operations it would take to reach this scenario without a white stone. So uh, to do this problem, it's actually not that difficult. So just to, just don't overthink it. Um, so let's say I have like a white stone and then a red stone and a white stone and then a red stone, like in this input statement here, white, red, white, 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 red, white, white, here, white, red, white. Oh uh, yeah, damn, I gotta erase this. Sorry guys, uh, uh, edit, undo. Yeah, white, red, white, white, red. White, red, white, white, red, white, red, red, white, red, red. So the the ones that I cannot have, right, is you can't have a red, uh, red, red stone next to a, uh, you can't have a white stone on the left of a red stone. So the ones that you can't have are this. You can't have this because this white is next to a red. You can't have this because this white is next to a red. And you can't have this because this white is next to a red. Okay, so one way to solve this is actually just to swap it, uh, a white stone with a red stone. Um, it could be any of them from the back. Um, so if you think about it, if I'm gonna swap, keep track of a current like counter and swap it, I just need to do a certain number of swaps of the red stones for the swapping the whites for the reds. And uh, technically I don't have to swap anything, right? So here's what you could do. Uh, what you could do is actually just count the number of redstones that I'm going to swap with the white, okay? Because uh, the problem just states us asks us uh, to count, right? So I don't I don't technically have to change the original string, right? They want us to count how many operations are needed to reach the situation without a white stone, without such a white stone. So they want us to count the number of operations it takes. So all you have to do is actually just count. So um, what you could do is actually just count the number of redstones. So in this case, I have one, two, three, four, four redstones, right? This is four reds. And then what you could do is because we are swapping the number of white stones, in this case, uh, next to a, with a, we're swapping the number of white stones that have, that are on the left of a redstone, Right, that's what we're doing. We're swapping a white stone that are next to redstone with another redstone. Right. Um, all we have to do is actually just to, since uh, we count, we counted all of the number of reds already that are in total in this sequence, which is four. We just have to loop from the beginning up to four. So like from here up to one, two, three, four. Uh, three, one, two, three, four. Yeah, up to here, and then check count how many whites there are because that's the number of ones that we have to swap right so with with the number of reds so if we count from the beginning of how many uh ones that we have to swap that are white from the beginning of the beginning uh count up to f up to four right so four places up here from from zero up to four and count how many whites that we have to swap that uh, will actually be our answer right if we count from, because uh, the total number of reds we have is four, and then we're swapping whites uh, in the beginning, that uh, in the beginning we have whites and reds, the whites are next to a red, we're swapping those, right? So then uh, all we have to do is just check how many whites there are from the beginning 
to the number of reds in the beginning, right? Because we're going to swap all the values of white with a red value from the end. So like basically we're trying to get something where it's like white, 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 and red, 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 you know, all the whites in the beginning, all the reds in the end, right? Uh, that's what we're trying to do. Or we could, we're trying to do is like get all the reds in the beginning and all the whites in the end. So the number of swaps it would take is actually just the number of reds and looping it from the beginning because we're going to try to count how many whites that we are that we're trying to swap. So all you have to do is count the number of reds here, which is we did, we count as four, and then loop from the beginning up to four, number of reds, and then check how many whites there are because that will be the number of swaps you have to do. Okay, so in this case, it would be like one, two, three. So um, the code here is down here. I'll show you the code. Uh, right here. Okay, so this is the code. Um, so here, what we're going to do is we read in N and read in the string. So we're going to count the number of reds and then we add one for how many total reds in the sequence. Then we're going to loop from the beginning up to the number of reds because that is the from the beginning to the number of reds. That is that the number of reds that we're going to do, assuming that all the reds are in the beginning and then all the whites are in the end. Right. So assuming this is the this is the, what we're trying to do. And then we just count how many whites there are, because that's the number of times we have to swap from the beginning. So with the end. So that would be string check from string. Uh, after looping, after we're uh, adding all the reds, we're going to loop from I0 up to reds, I++, and then we're going to check if string at I is equal to W, and then add one for ops, and then after that, we just print out ops. Okay, another one. All right, this is uh, probably very hard. Uh, this, is, this is pretty difficult to understand, but first... Uh, I'm going to show you something. Oh wait, yeah, the, the alter, alter. Okay, so E is pretty difficult to understand. Okay, so you have n logs of length a i a two up to a n. You're trying to cut the logs at most k times in total. Who's uh, when a log l is cut at a point whose distance from the n is it becomes two two lengths t and then l minus t, right? So if I cut a log from the beginning, it's t. If I, it becomes two lengths T and L minus T. So now what we're trying to do is we want to find the shortest possible length of the longest log after K at most K cuts. Okay, so this is a bit, a bit difficult. Um, basically, this problem is trying to say is that we are tr we're going to cut the... We have a bunch of logs, right? We're going to cut the logs each a number of times, right? Um, whenever I cut the log, I want to find the shortest length after I cut the longest log, uh, is he right? I'm gonna. I want the shortest possible length after after I cut the longest log, and I only could do it at most k cuts. So if I cut like once, uh, if I cut it, uh, let's say I cut a log, that'll be like one cut, and then um, like uh, okay, my bad. Let me explain it again. So if I cut a log, basically I want to cut go through the, the each logs try to cut it and then make sh find the shortest possible length that I could cut of the longest log so based on all the logs right in this length of a uh, oh, my bad in the lengths of a1 a2 up to a n there's a bunch of logs right uh, we're gonna cut the longest log right and we want a shortest possible length after cutting the longest log and then we're gonna do that for uh at most k cuts so at most k cuts we're gonna cut that number of times and print out the shortest possible length. Okay, so what's difficult about this problem is, is that um, first of all, we don't know we don't know the length that we're gonna cut. That's the hard part, right? Trying to finding the shortest length possible to cut the log. So what we're gonna do is we are actually going to guess. So um, we're what we're gonna do is we're going to guess by using binary search. So we're gonna start from one going up to the uh, the maximum length of the length of this log, which is, uh, it could be anything like A max. So out of all these logs, A1, A2 to the AN, we're gonna find the maximum log, right? Then we're gonna go, uh, do binary search from one to that. And we're basically, we are guessing a point, the length that we're gonna cut. So we're gonna binary search and then guess that length. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna 
use that length and cut all the logs for all the values using that length. And if it doesn't work, right, we're going to move our range either up or down. So like, let's say I have, um, uh, I need to re re redo this, uh, clear this. Okay. So let's say I have like a log. Um, so I, I, I'm going to explain how to uh, cutting logs. So, be, uh, bear with me. So let's say I have a one, a two up to a n. So these are lengths of log, right? These are the lengths of logs and we want to find the shortest length to cut, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find, like, I don't know what, what length to cut, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the maximum log, uh, maximum length, right? Out of all these values. So this is going to be a, uh, max length of the log. I'm going to do it by looping through and getting the max length. So let's say, let's call it a max, right? So the maximum value we could cut for each log is going to be between, whoops, I didn't mean that. No. Yeah. It's going to be between one and, uh, a max, right? Cause a max is the longest length for all the logs. So whatever length that we're cutting is going to be between, be between one and a max. So what we're going to do is that we're going to do binary search to guess whatever length we're going to cut and do that for all the logs and see if it works. Okay. So yeah. So, um, to binary search, basically what we're doing is, um, using this range from one to a max. So like, let's say I have one here and then a max is my last one here. I'm going to get the, basically what binary search is I'm going to get the middle value between this one and a max. So let's say, uh, let's call this a mid and check. Does this work? Uh, if this works, then since we want the smallest, uh, smallest, uh, log, I think we are going to move our range either up or down. So, uh, I actually don't remember what the range, what we, what we did, but I'm going to look at the code again, just to make sure that I'm not completely wrong on this. Right. Um, yeah. So we move the, if it works, so if it works, we move the right range to the middle. And if it doesn't work, we move the left to the middle. Right. So, and then after that, we just print out, right. So because we want the shortest length that we're cutting. So let's say this, so let's say in the beginning, my range is from here to here, a max that I'm trying to guess. Right. And now I, I just guess the midpoint, right? I'm going to use binary search, to get the midpoint. So I do this one. Let's say this does work. Right. If this does work and we want the smallest length, right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my range that I'm guessing from one to the end, because we want the smallest length, right. Um, I'll move this, I'll move the, um, the maximum range, which is like a max. I move the right down to the middle. So now my a max, the, the right range is going to be between here and here. Right. It'll be like that because that's the range that I'm going to do. I want the smallest. I want to get the smallest one, right? So, uh, if this middle one works, I'm going to move my right range. Originally, if it was the a max, I'm length that I'm guessing it's right. Move that down here to a mid and I'm going to do it again. I'm gonna do it again. And, uh, let's say, let's say, uh, the middle, will, I'll get the middle point from here again, from a and a mid guess it, uh, does it work? Let's say, let's say it's a mid two, a mid two. Sorry about the handwriting, but does this work? Uh, if it works, I'm going to move the right range down again. And, uh, if it, if it doesn't work, I'm going to move my left range up. So I'll move my left range up. Yeah. So if we keep guessing the ranges and moving it, uh, the right, uh, if it does work, I move the right down and move the, if it doesn't work, I move my left range up basically at the, in the end, that's going to give us a, a length that is the smallest length that we're cutting. Okay. I hope you guys understand what I'm doing. So I'm basically doing binary search, cutting, uh, guessing each length and see if it works or not. Okay. So now, now once you guys understand the range that we're guessing, here's the, diff the difficult part. Um, difficult, difficult part is that we need to cut, uh, at least K or no, at most K at most K cuts. So at most K cuts, um, so let's say we're cutting a value 
let, so uh, the difficult part about this is that we have to check, is this length that we're cutting that we guessed right possible? Is it right or not? So to do that, um, we need to think, let's break this problem up with one log first, right? So uh, let's assume that I'm going to have one log. Oh, what did I just do? What did I do? Okay. So let's assume I'm only cutting one log with a one value. So if I'm cutting, let's say I have a log here, I'm going to cut this log, right? So I guess there's a distance that I'm going to cut. So this is assuming one log, right? This is just one log. We're, uh, we're not checking all the logs yet, but let's say I'm going to cut a distance. Th this is the distance I'm cutting D, right? I guess this distance, I'm going to cut this log. Um, so how many cuts can I do with the uh, log one? the length of this length log of D of D how many how many cuts can I do it's simple I just take the length of the log and divide it by D and the reason why is that that's gonna give me the number of times I could cut the log so I cut the log once here and I'm gonna cut a log another time let's say I cut another log here that'll be another D log that I cut and then another one another D log that I'm gonna cut right so then if I if, let's say I'm take L the, the length of my log and divide by D that was gonna give me the number of times I could cut using the length of D that I just guessed, right? And in this case, let's assume it was like three, right? Because I took a log L1, I cut it D times, and there, I, the number of cuts I could do was one, two, and three, okay? So uh, the tricky part about this is that, let's say you have like leftovers. So if I have not like a leftover here, uh, I, want, I don't want to include this leftover, right? So the actual maximum value you could do here is actually gonna be length of the log divided by D and that'll be the number of cuts and it's, it'll be the ceiling of it and then subtract by one because that that's gonna get rid of this offset of the, the not include this piece that I don't care about okay so yeah that's what this was gonna be the number of cuts number of cuts for one log so now now we need to check for all the logs okay so we have to check logs from uh, L1, L2, L3 up to LN. So to check for all the logs, you have like L1, L2, L3, L4 up to L of N, right? Those are the number, the lengths of all the logs. Um, so now remember we could only have cuts, number of cuts that are at most K. So I think that's less than or equal to K. That's the number of uh, cuts we could do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through from all here to loop through all the number, the lengths of the log, and then cut cut all of them by the length of d. So I'm gonna go through all the logs, uh, get the number of cuts for each of these each of these logs. So I'm gonna do like a loop from li over d for all of them. Get the ceiling of it and minus one. So that'll be the number of cuts, and I'm gonna add them. right number of cuts i'm going to go through all the lengths of the logs and i'm going to add the number of cuts to for each of them and then once i get the total number of cuts i just check is it the is the total number of cuts less than or equal to k and if it is then i return true that means that my check was right if it's not then i would return false so that's that's basically how you do this problem we guess a length to cut for each of the logs uh using binary search uh if the uh if if it does work then we're gonna move our range down right because we want the shortest length to cut that works so we're gonna move the length the right range down uh if it doesn't work we're gonna move the left range up right so then we could find the right range the right number to cut so yeah so we use binary search guess a d from the smallest value to large value guess a d which is the length, the length we're gonna cut we find the number of cuts Check if it's less than or equal to K. If it does, we're going to move our right range down and then do the, do the same thing again. Guess another D. Uh, if it doesn't work, move the left range up and then keep guessing until finally we get the shortest number value, shortest distance we go cut that has a length less than or equal to K. So yeah, um, this is how you do the code. So here, this is the code. Uh, first of all, I created a vector for the number of numbers N and K. And uh, that's it. Um, here, 
I read in all the lengths of each log. That's what A of I is. So this for loop reads in the all the lengths of each log. And then I get the maximum number of the log. So then I could get the right range, the maximum range I could that I'm gonna use. Uh, right here is I'm gonna use binary search. So this is basically just guessing, guessing uh, the right range or not, the right number or not. So if binary search would take the middle of value of what we're doing. So here I start I left starting from zero. The like let's say zero is the lowest number we could cut, right? Can, can cut. Right is the maximum number we could cut. Um, while left is less than right, I do uh, left plus one, but uh, that's just this is just like moving the left up or down, right? Um, that's what this while loop is doing. Um, we're gonna f get the middle value between our left and right ranges. Get the middle. We're gonna check if this works. If it works, we're gonna move our right range down. If it doesn't work, we're gonna move our left range up. Okay, so that's basically what this code is doing. Um, left plus one is just, uh, is just moving the left range up by one, making sure that works or not. Um, yeah, that's what this is doing. Because we want the shortest number, shortest uh, shortest distance that we're cutting to be make sure that works. So that's why we do this. In the end, um, we just print out right because that's the uh, left and right is gonna. We keep guessing left and right is gonna get closer and closer together. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, in the end. The, they're going to get to a single point and then that'll be the uh, last number. Okay. So now, now how do we check the, if the distance we're cutting is actually less than or equal to K, the number of cuts is less than or equal to K. Um, all you have to do, remember what I told you is actually just to loop through all the values and then add up each number of cuts. So this is the number of cuts for each value where we have a, uh, this is the variable now is equal to zero, right? That now is just the number of cuts we're doing. And all we're doing is just taking the current length and dividing it by uh, X, which is the value that I'm guessing, right? Remember we use a value that we're guessing. Uh, in the example, I said D, but here in the code, I just wrote X, but yeah, X is the number that we're guessing that we're passing in from binary search to the checking the number is less than or equal to K, right? We're guessing an, a value. That's what we're doing here. Um, yeah. So what we do is we take the value, the length of the log, the current value of the length of the log, uh, minus one and then divided by X. That's basically just doing this, right? We're taking the length of the log divided by X. Uh, in here, I wrote D in the code. I wrote X. It's just the number we're guessing, right? The length that we're guessing for the log. So yeah, that's what you do here. Um, I did minus one before, so this is actually equivalent to L one minus one over D, right? This is equivalent to that. So that's what I did here. Yeah, that's the same thing. So yeah, this would get each cut, the number of cuts for each log, and then we add up, we sum them up. And then if it's less than or equal to K, we just return that. So yeah, that's how you do this problem. So yeah, that's how you do all the problems, A, B, C, D, E, I don't know how to do F yet. Um, yeah, I'm still stuck on trying to figure out how to do range queries. I'm going to give a tutorial on that when I figure it out. But yeah, that's basically this whole video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I couldn't do a live stream today. I'm so sorry about it. But yeah, uh, this is the best I could do. But yeah, uh, rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.